Hi everyone and welcome to my classroom. Today we are going to be talking about DNA profiling and this lesson is aimed at grade 12 level. So what does the exam guideline want, want you to know about DNA profiling? Now, first up is the definition of a DNA profile. Second is the uses of DNA profiles and thirdly the interpretation of DNA profiles. This video is only going to focus on the third one, which is the interpretation of DNA profiles. Now, if we look at our DNA profiles, we've got two types of interpretation questions that pop up most of the time. Um, the first one is uh, a crime scene. And uh, just remember that with a crime scene, the DNA profile needs to be an exact match and it can only confirm that the suspect was present at the crime scene. It doesn't necessarily say that they are guilty of the crime. So just be careful with your wording over there. And the second type would be paternity or maternity, paternity being the, um, the more popular question. And for that one, the offspring will have to have bands from both parents. So let's dive right in. Our first question comes from the Life Sciences Paper 2, February, March in 2017. Now in this question, uh, question 3.1, Tom and Maria have three children. One of the three children was adopted. A DNA profile for each member of the family was prepared to determine if Tom is the father of all three children. And we have Mary, uh, Anne and Steve. And then the DNA profiles were given below. Now, before we go on to the next question, I'm going to give you a little tip on um, how to figure out which kid is actually the biological offspring. OK, so uh, this is usually a good time to have some highlighters available. And uh, the first thing that you do is you have a look at Tom. OK, and we're going to make Tom blue in this case. And uh, we're going to have a see and see how, which of the kids have got Tom's bands. Now, if we start at the top, Tom's first band, which we see over here, uh, doesn't appear in any of the children. But his second band, the one you see over here, okay, appears in both Anne and Steve. Okay. Then uh, his third band, the one which we see over here, okay, that one appears only in Anne. Okay, and then his last band only appears in Steve. Okay, now at this point, we cannot make snap judgments yet. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, Maria. And uh, Maria has got a first band, which is over there, that appears in both Anne and Steve. Her second band over there appears in Steve only. And the third band we see over here doesn't appear in any of her children. Okay. Now, the next thing we have a look at is now we'll have a look at the offspring. Okay. Now, Anne over here. Okay. As you can see, all of all three of the bands that we can see here, they are accounted for. She got one from her mom and two from her dad. So she is definitely one of the offspring. Okay. Um, and the same thing with Steve. Okay, if we have a look at Steve, Steve has got four bands and two of them are accounted for from mom, two of them are coming from dad, which means Steve is definitely an offspring. Okay, now poor Mary over here, Mary doesn't have any of her bands that correspond with Tom or Maria, which makes Mary the adopted child. Okay, so if you have a look at the question, uh, in question 3.1.1, they want to know which one of the children has been adopted, uh, Mary. And as you can see, it's a two mark question because there's quite a lot of thinking that has to go in there. And then in question 3.1.2, they want you to explain your answer. And um, it's important here that you have a look at using the correct terminology. OK, and uh, here we are looking for no matching bands or bars or the pattern or the DNA for a doesn't batch. And it's very important to say here with both parents. OK, so she's not just not Tom's child. She's also not Maria's child. Then if we have a look at our next question, this one comes from the February, March 2018 paper 2. OK, now here we have uh, the DNA profiles of a child and her mother and then four possible males. 
there's uncertainty about the biological father and the, to establish paternity DNA profiling was conducted. Now, this is a very nice question as well. So let's do the same thing. Okay. We pick out mom. Okay. And uh, if we have a look at mom, as you can see, there's one of mom's bands is definitely in the child. And now we go and have a look at which bands actually match both the mother and the child. Okay. Now we go and have a look and see which ones of the other bands match the males. Okay. Because remember, all of the bands that are not accounted for by the mother needs to be accounted for by the father. Okay. Because you can't have DNA just appearing out of nowhere. An offspring gets it from either mom or dad. There's no other options. Okay. So let's have a look. Okay, so let's see there. That one can either be male one or male three. Okay, then that one over there can only be male three. Okay, and then if we have a lot, look at the last one. The last one can either be male three and maybe male four, we're not sure. It seems to be off a little bit there by like half a millimeter or something. But um, it looks like if we have a look at the bands that most of the bands are actually accounted for by male three. So male three is most probably our father over there. Okay, so the question is, which male is the biological father of this child? And then the answer there would be C because that would be male three. Right, and then our last question comes from the Life Sciences Paper 2, November 2016 paper, okay? And uh, this is also a multiple choice question. And here we have uh, a crime scene question. So remember with uh, paternity and maternity, we want the offspring to have all of their DNA should be accounted for by mom and by dad. But with a crime scene, we are looking for exact matches. Okay, so first question that they're going to ask, so they give us this nice um, DNA profile. And the first question they want to know is what is the procedure above called? Now, let's just quickly go through the options here. Um, it can't be cloning because cloning is when you make an exact copy. And that's definitely not what we did over here. OK, then it can also not be B, which is DNA replication, because re DNA replication is not making a copy of the organism like cloning but is making the copy of the DNA. Then, uh, yes, it can be DNA profiling, okay? And the other one, last one, uh, fingerprinting. It cannot be fingerprinting because fingerprinting doesn't even have anything to do with um, uh, uh, DNA. Fingerprinting is about the, the patterns that are on your fingertips. Those are unique to every person as well. Then our next question, 1.1.6, the evidence in the diagram shows that, and here we've got some some options okay about you know tom and joe and mo so what we're going to do is we're going to look at at all of the options okay so let's first go back right so if we have a look at our dna profile now we're going to look at question 1.1.6 now before i start with this question i just want to warn you that uh, the memo for this question um, actually says that there's no answer the, the learners were given the mark in this exam and i'll explain now why now OK, but let's have a look at how these things match. Now, remember, we're looking for an exact match. OK, so uh, if we have start having a look at the DNA, so this is the part where you take your highlighter and you go and look for the bands that actually match exactly the DNA from the crime scene. OK, and uh, if you start doing this, remember, we're, we're not looking for those ones that are a little bit up or a little bit down. OK, we're looking for the ones that are an exact match. OK. Um, and you'll see that in this particular question, it looks like both Tom and Joe have match with the crime scene. OK, but um, Joe matches exactly. And Tom, there's actually two bands of Tom's that were unaccounted for. OK, now, if we have a look at the question about what does the evidence say? OK, now the evidence says that only Tom was present at the crime scene. Now, we don't think that's a possibility because it could have been that Joe was actually uh, um, present at the crime scene as well. But we can't be sure, okay? 
Now, um, Tom and Joe were present at the crime scene. Uh, you know, it's a case of was it a complete DNA sample? Wasn't it? I think that um, that's the possible or the answer that's possibly the most correct. But I think the examiners didn't feel very comfortable um, with the, the, the small amount of information that was actually given here. OK, um, we definitely know it wasn't C because Mo wasn't even present in the crime scene at all. And then um, D is definitely not an option with none of the crime scene uh, people available at the crime scene. So the, the, the one that comes the closest is B, which is Tom and Joe were present at the crime scene. But we also can't be sure because it could be that the DNA sample degraded a little bit. We, we don't just simply do not have enough information. And I think that's why the examiners um, in this case felt uncomfortable giving marks for a specific question and all. Everybody was awarded the two marks then. Okay. Then if we have a look at question 1.1.7. Now below is a list of the possible uses of the procedure shown in the diagram above. Um, you'll get this information from your textbook, um, but let's have a look. Um, first one, uh, paternity testing. Yes, we can definitely use uh, DNA profiling for paternity testing. Uh, we can definitely match tissues of organ for, for organ transplants. Um, we can, identification from fingerprints is not an option. Remember here in the beginning we said that um, fingerprints are actually unique to every person. It doesn't have to do with your DNA though. Um, and we can definitely use it to screen for genetic disorders, okay? Uh, which means if we have a look at our combinations at the bottom, that means that the only possible answer here could be B. Right, then that is it for DNA profiling. I hope this helped. Good luck.